We greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thanking him for the opportunity to have the Word of God to bring to you, and thanking him for you having a hunger for the precious Word of God. We invite you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to be speaking out of verse number 2, and our subject for today is Gospel Succession. Gospel Succession, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So that which you have, you, Timothy, a pastor, have heard of me, an apostle, you commit it to faithful men, and they will be able to teach others also. So it goes from the apostle Paul to the pastor Timothy to faithful men that he trained, and then they spread it out to others, and that's the gospel succession. You notice the word therefore in verse number one, and you know we always go back up and see why it says therefore. And in uh, the first chapter of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit shall be with you and shall be in you in John chapter 14 and verse number 17. So we're coming to you today from Grace Baptist Church in Jonesboro, Georgia with a message on gospel succession. So in verses uh, number 15 through 18 of that chapter number 1, He tells Timothy what has happened to him as far as those who have turned against him. And he lists them out in verse number 15. Then he lists out one who was faithful to him and even sought him out as to where he was imprisoned in Rome. And he said he was not ashamed of my chain. He was chained up in that jail. And so he said he sought me in Rome diligently and found me. And so then he goes on and says, Now, Timothy, these are the things that are going to happen to you as well. Therefore, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. So he says, this is what you're going to have to deal with and put up with and contend with. You're going to have to have uh, Satan come after you with those who are uh, 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 hypocrites and who want to destroy the word of God, who are jealous of you and your gift, and they will oppose you. But there will be those who will seek you out and will encourage you. And he said, so whether it's one or the other, therefore, you be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And he said, endure hardness as a good soldier. So he said, uh, that good thing that is committed unto thee, Now that good thing that was committed unto him uh, by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us, the apostle said, is the gift of the ministry, the call of God to the ministry, the call of God to salvation first of all, and then the call of God into the ministry. And he said that good thing that's in you, he said keep it. Now he understands and knows that through many dangers, toils, and snares we have already come It's hard to continue on with people standing in your face and contending against you and blaspheming you. So he says, I want you to keep it by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. You're not going to be able to do this of yourself. You're going to have to have the Holy Spirit that put this good thing in you to be able to keep it for you. He gave it to you and he will keep it in you. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 11. 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. He said, so God committed this gospel to my trust. I'm going to have to be the one to answer for it. I'm going to be the one that has to contend for it. There's not going to be anybody else that can do it for me. There'll be some others that can do it with me, and they can contend for their faith, but nobody can keep this ministry that God has given me except the Holy Ghost in me personally. Then in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. He said, I'm having to keep that which God entrusted me with. But you're going to have to do that for yourself. And friend, it's, it's, a, it's a personal battle. It's, it takes personal determination to continue on in the ministry. And, and if, you, if you're not called into the ministry, you need to stay out of it. Because only the Holy Ghost who calls can be the force and the power who keeps. I know whom I have believe it and am persuaded that he, he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20 and 21, let me find it. Here it is. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. That's how he, that's how he ends up the second, uh, I mean, the first letter to Timothy. He said, be careful about vain babblings. There'll be all kinds of people try to persuade you with all kinds of tricks of the devil to get off of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. People don't want to hear the gospel, folks. Listen, if it's not about a two-second message on our little, uh, on our little cell phones, we're not, we can't even keep our attention on it. To, for you to be able to listen to this message, which we usually go for about one hour per message, it has to be the Holy Spirit in you making you hungry and giving you opportunity, but especially giving you the desire to, to fashion the opportunity and to make sure you have the opportunity to listen to this word. People don't even spell words uh, right on, uh, on their texting. Y-O-U-R, your. They put U-R. The letters U and R, your. It's, it, we've come to the day where dear soul. The ability to endure the sound of the gospel is a very rare thing. And you're going to have to earnestly contend for it, to listen to it, as I am going to have to, and I hope continue to, endure it, uh, that I might be able to keep that which has been committed unto me by the Holy Spirit which is in me, and not quit, and not say this is harder than I thought it was going to be, and I'm just not going to do it anymore. We've been in this church and been with this church for 45 years. So the Lord has been gracious to us. And what we've tried to do is not form committees and have programs and all that stuff, but stick with nothing but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's been committed to us from God. I was not uh, brought into this by religion. I was brought into it by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to stick with the, that which the Holy Spirit does and make sure that you have the gospel afforded you and it's up to you to make sure that the gospel that is afforded to you has entrance into your heart and you have the determination to keep that which God has committed to you. And you will have to have the Holy Spirit to do that as well, because there's so many things in this world today to draw your attention away from the gospel. And, and, and it's easy to get your mind 
off on it. Now, it's not by legal appointment. In the, in the book of Amos, chapter 7, the book of Amos, chapter 7, <clears throat> Amos I was the White House prophet. He was the popular preacher. And uh, Amos was a little old country boy. He was a picker of sycamore fruit. And he goes up to, the, uh, to Bethel and, and preaches the word of God according to God's direction. God told him to go preach there. But the preacher up there didn't like it. So the Amaziah goes and tells the king. And, and he gives the king all kinds of false information about Amos to try to run him off. And we take up in, with that in Amos chapter 7. And verse number 12. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos. Now here's what you're going to have to contend with. Those who are brought forth by religion will come up against those who are brought to this by the Holy Spirit. Men do not like, people do not like God-called ministers. It offends them. It shows them up. The God-called preacher has the Holy Spirit to be his wisdom. And so there's great wisdom that comes from God through that God-called minister. But those who are just denominational bailhops, they, don't, they can't contend with that. They can't match that kind of preaching because it's really not Amos that's doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in Amos. And you can't get any better than that. So Amos 7 and verse 12. Also Amos I said unto Amos, O thou seer, S-E-E-R. He said, oh yeah, you're some great uh, spiritual mystic, you know. He said, go, flee thee away unto the land of Judah. Get back out there in the country. You're a rustic old country boy. You don't belong here in the city of the king. Go back where you come from. Flee thee away into the land of Judah and there eat bread and prophesy there. You're just up here trying to have a better uh, piece of bread to eat. You're just here trying to put a feather in your cap. They will have all kinds of lies to put out on you, and they always know how to live your life for you better than you do for yourself. Of course, they're not living their life very good for themselves, but they can always tell you how to live your life for yourself. So he said, go flee to the land of Judah, go back into country, and eat your old barley bread there. You're just up here trying to uh, make a better living. But prophesy, this is verse 13 of Amos 7, but prophesy not again any more at Bethel. Listen, for it is the king's chapel, it is the king's court. Now listen, country boy, you with your rustic clothes, what are you doing up here with your bad language? You know, uh, and, and trying to preach. All you're trying to do is horn in on the goods that are around here because this, this is the king's city. This is the king's court. You don't blog here. Now, how do you deal with that? Amos chapter 7, verse 14. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet. You're right. My daddy wasn't a prophet. My granddaddy wasn't a prophet. I didn't get this by natural succession. I didn't get this by religious appointment. I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. I was, yes, I'm a country boy. I just took care of the flocks. And I picked the sycamore fruit when it was in season. You're right. So he admits to that. But listen at the next verse. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, The Lord took me and the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. And then what does Amos do? He preaches to it. He said, Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. This ain't my word, Amaziah. I know you get them real flowery speeches and get up there and, and, and the king just loves you because 
You, you uh, decorate his court with your flowery, uh, flowery uh, language and, 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 and you compliment the glories of his court. But I want to tell you something. God called me. God sent me. So you hear the word of the Lord. And God begins to speak through Amos. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. Hard message. Took a determined man to preach it. And when the White House prophet came to him with all of his rings, you know, and he's the bishop and the pope and all of his flowing robes and, and you know, with the authority of the king behind him and all, and comes up to this country boy, it, it, it's hard on a man stand in a face like that and tell him this is what's going to happen to you individually because you're denying the word of God and you're trying to run me off and I'm the only one preaching the word of God around here. But the one thing that you find in the book of Acts over and over and over again is that the apostles preached the word of God with boldness. There comes a determination not from the tr truly God called man, but through the truly God called man of boldness and stand in the face of hell itself and say, Thus saith the Lord. That's what happened. So this thing has got to be passed on not from religious succession. It's not that it, it is uh, by religious appointment, but the gospel, the true word of God, comes down and comes forth from God himself. Look at Ezekiel chapter 40. Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse number 4. And this is a, an, an amazing verse wherein Ezekiel is going to tell us it's in the Word of God. Thank God for the printed Word of God down through the centuries. Thank God for our Bibles. Thank God that they're more just than just, quote, our Bibles, unquote. They are the Scriptures of the Lord. Listen, Isaiah, no, Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse number 4. The man who had a line in his hand and a measuring reed who pictures Christ and is laying down the rod of God, the measuring rod, the measuring stick, the yardstick on Israel and saying this is what's in and this is what's out. He's speaking to uh, Ezekiel. The man said unto me, Ezekiel 40 and verse 4, Son of man, number one, behold with thine eyes. You need to have some vision of this. And hear with thine ears. The Lord Jesus Christ, after most of all of his parables, he will say, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, wait a minute. Everybody had ears, but not the kind he was talking about. He's talking about the spiritual awareness and consciousness to be able to receive and to understand and to put in practice the Word of God. Those that do not understand and put in practice the Word of God are those who have no ears to hear. So he says, hear with thine ears, and then set thine heart upon what? All that I shall show thee. Now, folks, if you're going to be like old Jehudi with your pen knife in your winter house and just cut off the pages and portion you don't like and throw it in the fire, you just well stay out of this. There's some things in this in this scripture that's hard to preach. There's some things that get you in a lot of trouble with people. If you're just wanting to, for people to like you, you need to stay out of the pulpit. Jesus said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Let me ask you something. Name me all the churches 
in your community that you know of that everybody hates them. What you find is that most of the churches want to put on pageants and programs and bring in Santa Claus and Christmas trees and the Easter Bunny and have ball teams and do all kinds of things to make everybody feel good and make everybody like them. If, if you are liked by everybody, you are not following God. For the Lord said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And he tells you why they'll hate you. He said, because they, the world hateth me because I tell it the truth. And I make them see what God's word says about them and their religion and their practice when it's wrong and it's out of sorts with God and it's quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit. Dear soul, if you're going to get in this pulpit and say what God says, you're going to be hated and you're going to have to be told by the Apostle Paul like he told Timothy. These are the ones that hated me and wouldn't have anything to do with me. This is the only one that came to me in Rome and didn't uh, and, and wasn't ashamed of my chains. You're going to have all that. And so he says, Set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. Listen. Why? For the intent that I may show them unto thee art thou brought hither. The reason that I bring you here is to give you an understanding of thus saith the Lord. But that's not all. The reason that I brought you here to let you set your heart upon and understand what God is showing to you personally. He said, you are to declare, listen, all. You are to declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. You can't leave anything out. But you say, if I preach that, it will offend them. Then either get out or get in. Either say it for the glory of God with compassion in your heart, knowing that you also have uh, 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 the, the flesh and, and the sinful nature yourself and praying for yourself and praying for the people and, and with compassionate heart, uh, tell them what God said and don't hold back. You can't, you can't edit God's Word. You can't go soft on something that God goes hard on. You need to say what God said in the way that He said it. And listen, if it cleans out your church, you didn't really have a church. If, if they are the people of God, then they will thrive on it. Because they want to know what thus saith the Lord so that they'll know how to please Him because they've got to stand in that responsibility of that word in, in His face at the hour of judgment. And they want to know what does God want? What does God not want? Tell me the truth. Give me the word of God. Don't hold back. Let it be as God said it to you. And that's what God's saying here. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. Now let's go back to Isaiah chapter. Uh, wait a minute. While we was there, I should have looked at Ezekiel 44. There was two more verses I wanted you to see. Excuse me for making you lose your place and having to go back. Ezekiel 44 Verse number 5 and 6. Ezekiel 44, 5. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning the ordinances, the customs, the statutes of the house of the Lord. Not talking about the building uh, itself, the temple uh, building, he's talking about the people that are the temple of the Lord. And all the law, laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. 
You need to familiarize yourself as how to come in and go out before the Lord in the presence of the other people. Verse 6, Ezekiel 44, 6. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel. That's who he was talking about in verse number 5. The rebellious, the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought unto my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it. Even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Now, since Ezekiel preached that, somebody's going to lose their job. Well, that's, you know, my son-in-law, uh, he's having a kind of rough time, and let's, let's make him the keeper of the doors of the house of Israel. It has a little, you know, had a little salary with it. It helped him out. Well, wait a minute. <clears throat> that man lives in sin. Well, you know, everybody does. So let's give this job to my son-in-law. There you go. Here we go. Now the preacher's got to stand up there and preach against it and say, you have brought people in that are abomination to me, and they are just keepers of the doors of God because you wanted them. They're not th that which I want, but preacher, you've got to get up there and straighten that out. Do you think he's going to be very popular? I guarantee you they're going to call a, a, on a vote to vote that man out. It always turns that way. So he says, here's what you, I want you to do. You get up there and tell them what I said. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 50. In verse number 4. This is a precious verse to me. I remember when God gave it to me and it, it encouraged my heart so much. Isaiah 50 and verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. Where did this man learn letters? He don't know anything. One of the hardest trials I ever had to go through was a, uh, was a man who called himself our brother that had a, a, a college degree and, and uh, said he was a preacher. And all he knew how to preach was uh, soul winning. And, and uh, when he heard me preach, he set himself against me and said, I'm not going to listen to some southerner who has no education. That's what, that's what Amos I said to Amos. Go back to where you come from. You don't have any education. You don't have even the right clothes to be up here in the king's city, in the king's court. He said, listen, it doesn't matter about outward appearance. The Lord looketh on the heart. God told me to come say this, and I'm not going to listen to you because me and you are going to be standing in the judgment with God judging both of us. I ain't listening to you. I'm going to do what God told me to do. And here it is. God will take care of it. How did you uh, come to be able to, be, to, to minister the word of God? The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He awakened mine ear to hear as the learned. Dear soul, the, these guys were said to be ignorant and unlearned. Look at Amos, no, Acts chapter 4. I'm going to quit calling out the wrong scriptures, I hope, in a little while. Acts chapter 4. And verse number 13. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness, I told you, they get Holy Ghost boldness. 
And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. The reason they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant is that they hadn't been involved in the school of the Pharisees. Oh, you're not like us. We have our phylacteries that are long. We, 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 we love the uppermost room in the synagogue. We love to be called rabbi by men. And, and y'all are just poor white trash. Just, you, you don't know anything. You had not been schooled by us. You, you don't have a class ring, ring like we do. Uh, listen, they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned. They marveled. That's why God chooses the base things and the foolish things and the things which are not. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That no flesh should glory in my presence. That if you're going to glory in anything, you say, well, I know that guy never even went to college, never went to school. He never went to uh, a the theology school, never even took a theological course. He don't know anything. But listen at the gracious words that come out of his mouth. For the Lord God hath given him the tongue of the learned, that he may speak a word in season to him that is weary. He can tell you your heart. Although he doesn't know that he's telling you your heart. How many times have I had people come up to me and said, Preacher, that's exactly the word that I needed. It was exactly that word that was fit for the condition that my life is in right now. I had cried out to God and prayed to God to help me, and He helped me through that message today. They walked away thanking God for it, and I still don't know what it was. I just said what God told me to say. Gave me the tongue of the learned. Listen. Listen. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them. They took notice of them that they had been with Jesus. Mm -mm. Isn't that precious? They don't have a sheepskin to show them. And I only know of one preacher that after he got graduated from seminary, later he went back and took his diploma back and gave it to him and said, this is of no use to me. I don't know why I wasted my time coming here. I got to, like Paul, had to go out in the desert and get rid of all this stuff y'all taught me so that I might learn the gospel as I sit at the feet of Jesus. Honest man, good man. Thank God for him, God rewarding him with the ministry that he has now. They were ignorant. They were unlearned. But it caused the Pharisees to marvel because they spoke the word of God with boldness, with authority. And they took knowledge of them. They took note. These men have been with Jesus. Dear friend, that's all I want you to know about me, that I have been with Jesus. Hopefully that's all you will know. The book of John, chapter 7. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse number 14. We're talking about gospel succession. John, chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Same thing. He hadn't been to any of our schools. The word letters is the same word scriptures in 2 Timothy 3.15. It's the same word writings in John 5.47, which is referring to the law. And he says, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Now, having learned from traditional religion will make you wrongly divide the word of truth. The only one who can rightly help you rightly divide the word of truth is the one who wrote it to start with, and that's the Holy Spirit. You will do better 
with your scriptures in your hands and the Holy Spirit in your heart and you on your knees crying out to God, Lord, take the veil away and let me see that which you're saying here. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. I don't want them to be otherwise. Let them be life to me. But if I am to see them in the way of life, then I have to understand the spirit of the word. The scriptures say of itself, the letter of the law killeth. It's the spirit of the word that quickeneth or giveth life. So he says, how knoweth this man letters having never learned? Now John 7 verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, and this is the same thing I can tell you. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. This old, I'm an ambassador of the gospel sent by God to tell you what thus saith the Lord. I'm not authorized to say whatever I want to. I'm not authorized to say what you want me to say so I won't get in trouble with you. If I am of God, I will stay in the vein of that which God hath called me, and that is, tell them all that thou seest, Ezekiel 40 and verse 4. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. How in the world are we ever going to have a true church with true gospel preaching who are uh, in, the, uh, in the truth of fellowship with Jesus Christ if the man of God doesn't do what God said. Jesus Christ himself said in John 7, 16, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Now listen, if any man will do his will, if you will submit yourself in obedience to Christ, that's the only way you're going to be able to understand the Scriptures. If you're living a life that is condoned by religion and you can pretty much just do whatever you want to, you're never going to understand the Scriptures. So he says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Awareness of the truth requires obedience to the truth. That's exactly what God is talking about. Obedience to the truth. Let's go back to Matthew 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 28. And read you a verse that's often quoted, but it's never really applied. It's often quoted, but it's not understood as anything that should really be adhered to. In Matthew 28, we say, well, we know what he's going to do. He's going to read the Great Commission. Well, I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to read Christ's Word, not just your form of religion. Verse 18, can't read Matthew 28, 19, and 20. You can't do it. It's wrong to do it. That's wrongly dividing the word of truth. There's a word therefore in verse number 19. You've got to go back and find out what he's talking about. Because of this, therefore. So let's read verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all jurisdiction, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Think about it. Jesus Christ is proclaiming himself to be the absolute sovereign Lord over everybody and everything. Over everything that happens, over the control of the earth, everything is under his absolute authority since his, he, he has uh, been obedient to God as, as a sacrificial lamb. He was perfect, therefore he came out of the grave and when he was raised again, he justified all of his people. And he says, I am not just 
you know, the pastor of the church. I'm the Lord of everybody. The wicked, uh, the, those who commit iniquity, uh, the devil himself, I'm Lord over hell. In verse 18 of Matthew 28, he sets forth his authority. It's all authority. Not some, but all authority. Where? In heaven and in earth. You don't know any other place than that. Now then, let's read verse 19. Go ye therefore, without awareness, in that knowledge that the sovereign of all the earth has sent you. So why are you going to listen to some little whiny religion that's saying, I don't like the way he preaches. He's just too plain. Stop up your ears. Did they send you? No. Who sent you? The Lord Jesus Christ. What is his name? His name is the Word. So you're going to get up here and change his words and change the words of the Word so you'll be popular? Ooh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, you might be in a, you know, a sweet spot temporarily while you're here on earth. But eternity is going to last a whole lot longer in your life. So you need to do what God said. Go ye therefore in that awareness of my absolute authority. Now listen. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And that don't end there. Teach all nations. What am I to teach them? This is the verse that is often quoted, but it's never obeyed. Well, not absolutely never, but pretty much without any obedience to it in religion. Teaching all nations, baptizing them. But what am I to teach them? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have Commanded you. If you're not under the uh, command of God, if you will do the will of God, we just read you in John 7, you will know the scriptures. So you are th those faithful men that Paul told Timothy to teach so that they might teach others. They have to be men who have been taught by Timothy, the pastor, who was taught by Paul, the apostle, to obey the words of God. And only in that obedience will you have a faithful receipt. Receive it. People will be glad to receive it uh, faithfully as long as you and them are doing what God told you to do. So not only is there the preaching of the words... There must be the living for the example while the word is being preached. You don't teach them anything other than that which I have commanded you. So while you are obeying and do what God said, you teach them. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And in that context, and in that context alone, behold, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Amen. This succession goes from Jesus Christ to those he calls and makes them understand his absolute sovereignty and then his command to teach by living right before God and preaching the word of God yourself. And then they will receive the word of God because only they who do his will will know the gospel, will know the doctrine. You can't know the word of God and you can't understand and perceive the word of God in an unholy and an ungodly lifestyle. That's the way it is. How in the world can God get his word into a heart sitting in the middle of a congregation and somebody else and some others not get a single understanding of it? 
Because that one individual is doing what God said, seeking the Lord, seeking the Word of God, seeking the truth, wanting to know God, proving it by doing what God told him to, and therefore that word preached goes deeply into his heart and gives him a spiritual understanding. While the rest of them just wonder why that preacher don't hurry up and get through because I need to be first in line at the steakhouse. So that preaching of the word is made effectual by the Holy Spirit into those that God grants the privilege and the opportunity and responsibility to live godly and holy and soberly and righteously in this present world. They will benefit by the gospel. That's how it's passed on. You do God's will. Those who are given to preach, who are called of God, it is the gospel is passed on to you by His obeying the word of God and preaching it to you with your determination to obey the word of God and receive it as from the Lord. Romans chapter 1. The book of Romans. Chapter number 1. Verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1. Verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ... For it is the power, the dynamite of God, unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein, for in that gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed, watch it now, from faith to faith. The one that's preaching it has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has been given the gift of faith that was once delivered to the saints. And he's walking in that faith, living in that faith, and preaching the word of God. And it goes from the one who has faith to those who want to hear the word of God and want to know the word of God. God grants them faith. And the word, way the gospel succeeds itself and and, and continues on is it goes from the faith of the one that's preaching it into the heart of faith to the one that's hearing it. It goes from faith to faith. That's how the gospel has come all the way down from Jesus Christ to where you are today. It wasn't because the bishop appointed stewards, the pope appointed, appointed uh, uh, bishops or whatever, it was because Jesus Christ granted faith and obedience to one, Timothy. He got it from one who had faith and obedience, the Apostle Paul. And it went from the Apostle uh, Paul's faith to Timothy's faith. And what was he going to do with it? He's going to commit it to faithful men. Why? So that they may teach others also. From the apostle to the pastor to the people that the pastor is preaching and teaching to, their, to the ones that will hear them. Gospel succession goes from faith to faith and faith to faith to faith. That's how it's all, that has come all the way down to us. That's the way that it is. First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. These are some most blessed verses. First Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 10. You know me, you've got to read verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, the result of your faith is the eternal and total salvation of your souls. All right, verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets in the Old Testament, this is how the apostles received the gospel. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace, watch it now, not that should come to them, but prophesied of the grace that should come to you. So the Holy Spirit gave it to the prophets, and the prophets 
preached it diligently, inquired and searched and gave themselves to finding out everything they could by the Holy Spirit so that they could prophesy of the grace that was coming to you. Verse number 11. Searching what, that is, searching to whom or when this was to come, searching what or what manner of the time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when the Holy Spirit testified of the glory that should follow. The, the prophets were testifying of the glory that should follow. And the Holy Spirit was signifying beforehand of the sufferings of Christ. Every time that Israelite took that bullock or that pigeon or that lamb to be slaughtered, there was a picture of the sufferings of Christ and that which the Israelite received was an awareness that he had obeyed God and God's wrath was not on him. And uh, that lamb's blood, that innocent blood, was that which gave him that release. So that was the testifying beforehand of the sufferings of Christ. And the Spirit of God testified uh, beforehand of the glory that should follow. They saw the, the sufferings of Christ, the result of that, the glory that should follow. Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, up to a mount that I will show thee. And there I want you to offer him as sacrifice unto the Lord. And I know you love him. And Abraham did it. And Jesus said in John chapter 8, 856, 858, I can't remember, look it up. Abraham saw my day, and he was glad. What day did he see? Abraham the father was taking Isaac the son up to the same mount in the Old Testament, that is Mount Calvary in the New Testament, the exact same mountain. Isaac had the wood on his back. Jesus had the cross on his back. The father went with him who had the knife and the fire. And the justice and the fiery indignation of God was going to fall upon the blessed Son of God on that mount. Abraham saw my day. He saw the sufferings and the glory that should follow. Back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 12. Unto whom it was revealed, unto the prophets it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported to you. The prophets wrote all they did. Uh, they wrote everything down that, that, that God told them and everything they did. And we have received it from them. But it was not unto them, but unto us. They did minister the things which we, the, the apostles, have reported to you. By them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. On Pentecost, there was the holiness of God coming down, revealing the glory of God, and giving them an understanding that you have with wicked hands crucified and slain the Lord of glory. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That was the whole thing coming down from the prophets to the apostles. Sent down from heaven. And we didn't hold back anything. We preached it to you. The succession... Sit still, I'll get it right in a minute. The succession of the gospel came from the apostles, excuse me, from the prophets to the apostles by the Holy Ghost to you. And the apostle Paul gave it to Timothy and Timothy gave it to faithful men, and they were able to teach others also. And it's come from faith to faith to faith to faith, all the way down. Here we are in 2020. Still got it. God said, I will be with you all the way, even to the end of the world. The gospel will not have ended and will not be destroyed uh, uh, until I come for you. I will be with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Teaching them to observe. That's going to be going on all the way to the end. None of God's elect shall perish. All of them shall hear the gospel with a good hearing. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. 
And, and listen, they're coming to me will make you understand and know that I'm not even not ever going to cast any of them out because those for, that the Father elected in me, I redeemed by my blood. And the ones that I redeemed by my blood are those that the Holy Spirit sealed unto the day of judgment. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14. The succession of the gospel. The scriptures cannot be broken. The Bible says that. God, the Word, has determined. I, the Word, will be with you all the way. Isn't that good? Tell me the story of Jesus right on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was, that ever was heard. Christ receiveth sinful men. Make the message clear. Make the message plain. But then some say, he preaches it too plain. I can't stay under his ministry. What do you, what do you want me to do? Lie about it so you'll feel better and help you feel good on your way to hell? I ain't going to do that. And not just because of your soul. It is because of that. But primarily it is because of God put this gospel in my heart. And I can't help but preach it as in the way God gave it to me. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I may preach a word in season to him that is weary. If somebody was going to measure and I passed a man out in his yard with a crew of carpenters who had already poured the foundation and they were putting up the two by fours and it looked like it was going to be a single car garage. Now, that man, the one thing that he has to have for all those workers to be able to be on, uh, on the right course of building this thing is they have to have a proper rule. Whether it's a yardstick or a ruler or a 50-foot tape, whatever it is, it has to be accurate. And they're so... If people don't measure up, I'm not going to cut off a few inches of my ruler just so it looks like they're okay. This thing, he said, take that line, that reed, and lay it down on the house. It will show you two things. Is it straight? And where the house starts and ends. Everything outside of that ruler, that, that measuring reed, is not right with God. Everything inside that measuring reed is that which is right with God. We must have a proper measure to go by. And as far as I can see, with all my soul, the measure, the rule, is the Word of God given to you undiluted, unchanged. And whether it stings or whether it hurts or not, Give it to you the way God gave it to me so that it might continue to, to pass on and it might continue in its succession from faith to faith. Our time is gone. There's a lot more to see. And I trust God will help us as we continue in our next course to see more of the gospel succession. Thank you for your prayers. May God glorify himself in this. Amen.